What up players, welcome to my uh, product review slash uh, nostalgic trip down memory lane. Um, I'm going to be unbooking the Lightmaster book for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay in just a second. And um, I just wanted to <laughs> preface the video because I already filmed it and um, I just wanted to preface it by saying that for me this was a video that I did because of how much I love this product. I mean, it's basically the thing that got me into Warhammer in the first place. Definitely Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Um, back when I was, you know, a, a sixth grader and um, walking through my hobby store, and I saw this and I picked it up, and um, I just, I just loved it ever since. And um, so it will tend to get a bit rambly as I do go down memory lane. But you know, if you have this playing on in the background while you are painting your miniatures or doing something else then um, that's, this is probably going to be more to your benefit than if you are just watching to look for an actual um, in-depth page-by-page review, which I do go into, but I, I could tell just by watching it that I was just going into fanboy mode, um, barely even into this one. So I hope you enjoy it, and I hope it helps bring you some insight on, into what Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay used to be in the first edition. A lot of paper and pencil, dice rolling um, before it became what it is today, which uh, is, I hear, totally awesome as well. I just haven't played it, really, the third edition. And I um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned and um, be sure to watch out for more unbookings, especially if you are um, a role player, because I've got a whole bunch more of Warhammer Fantasy roleplay, first edition, second edition stuff that I'd love to dig my, dig my teeth into, um, besides doing all of the modeling, painting, and um, you know, all of that stuff for the, that side of the hobby. So again, thanks for watching and hope you enjoy the rest of the video. What up players, it's Warboss Tail up in this mud and I got this package in the mail that I think, if it is what I think it is, I already opened uh, this, taking this out of the envelope, but if I think this is what it is, then this is going to be a very special unbooking. And let's t check it out. Oh yes, it is. For me, this was the book that started it all. Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay First Edition. It's just Lightmaster. I thought it was Return of the Lightmaster, but no, I guess it's just Lightmaster. This book, if you can get it, for all of you, um, for all of you fans of the fluff out there, it is. It, it is so great. It's packed full of great information, and if, especially if you play role-playing games. Um, and if you have a copy of... It is Return of the Light Master. What the... What? What? If you can get a copy of this, then... Um, then, then, then this is really such a great resource to have. It's, it's, it's a great story. Um, and you know, uh, role-playing games are just based on great stories, but... I can get something to hold my place open. But, um... But the story of Return of the Life Master um, is is just a great story. So what the book contains is uh, a little mini campaign spread over five chapters, some pre-generated characters, an appendix on the four major battles that you can play using the Warhammer Fantasy Battle tabletop rules, and um, an appendix dealing with the monk, which was not in the original rule book, I guess. But just I love how this game or this this campaign takes place over five chapters and it starts off small and um, it just grows and grows and grows and I know that's how like most role-playing games start uh, campaigns but this was the game or this was the campaign that started me in uh, into the world of Warhammer and mini war games uh, mini miniature war gaming and um, I, I just love it so much this has got to be my favorite one there's a little picture of Henrik Kemmler, and um, you get a little bit of a history of, 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 you know, the campaign beforehand. There's Krell, the White Lord, Henry Kemmler, back before he was a wizened old man. You get a map, um, and it was just fantastic. This was actually... <laughs> One of my first, I, I started playing Hero Quest, and um, started by playing Hero Quest, and then when I got this book, I think I got this book for something like ten bucks or something because they had stopped making the first edition rule books at the time, 
but um, when I saw this map and then I was like, oh, this is how the Skaven are laid out in their little campsite. How are you going to set up your guys? I was like, what? This is awesome. It was like my first little little war gaming with miniatures. Oh, put this upside down. And just, I, I remember seeing this map for the first time and looking at the layout of the buildings and the corresponding names and thinking that as a DM or the game master or the GM, the dungeon master, like being able to, you know, create this world with only just a map like this was so, it was, it was so awesome to me. It was so in, inspiring that, you know, you can create this world with just this little map, some text, and um, by knowing what's in each of these houses and uh, going back and creating all of the, all of the, uh, all of the details. So it's got a little bit of edits, I guess, which I'll go in and erase. Um, thank goodness it's only in pencil. But I remember creating, you know, me and my, my gaming group, I, I, I really wanted to be the, take the part of the, the GM at the time because um, I just loved all of these, you know, interactive points and getting to make up these characters and these, uh, describe the situations and stuff. And, and the guys in my, in my role-playing group were more into um, you know, playing the adventure and experiencing the adventure, doing what they could. But um, I, I just loved being the GM because you could control stuff like this. I remember this was a little game that you could play with your um, with your PCs, where they have to like. There's a festival going on in this town before you know all the stuff goes down and and uh, the Light Master comes back to life. Where you know the PCs get to take part in the festival and throw rocks at little pots hanging above a stream, kind of like um, piñatas, but throwing stuff at the at the pots to break them with all the candy coming out. Oh man. And then they go to the dwarf mine where Heinrich Kemmler summons some skeletons to attack the mine. Just this was such a great story. Oh I love this part. There's this farm that the PCs go to where it gets attacked by skeletons and each of the each of the NPCs are described in detail and what they're doing throughout the throughout the fight and you know how you should play them and then you get a little map of where the skeletons are where the champion is um, and I just remember playing this out like a like a house siege and just being reminded of things like um, Night of the Living Dead or you know those those kinds of movies where the house is beset on all sides by by um, zombies and skeletons Screaming Skull Catapult back in the day when Undead was a uh, was not exclusive to Tomb Kings and Vampire Counts. And yeah, the great thing about this was there was no um, there was no vampire involved. There was just Heinrich Kemmler, who was a human necromancer because he had so much power that he could summon all these zombies and attack this town. And um, I, you know, so the so you get started off with small battles like at the mine and at the farmhouse, and then. And then they, uh, there's more skeletons and more more zombies that he summons the, all the the dead corpses, and then they attack the actual town where the festival was in, and you have to do a running retreat and abandon the town and uh, <laughs> break out these rafts and sail down river to escape the skeletons, and it's just so so such a great narrative. Um, but from, you know the story is just so so awesome. Indiana Jones and um, like each each section has its own maps and details and it's fleshed out so well that you know a beginning game master and his group could run this uh, and um, have no problem. I remember this scene where you know you're, the the PCs encounter the Skaven for the second time, but this time there's no fighting. This is more of like a, a interactive section where you can choose to have the Skaven help. And, you know, back when Warhammer Fantasy Battles first came out, um, and I thought the idea of, like, giant talking rats, I thought that was so funny. And so, um, I was always, like, trying to get the PCs to ally with the Skaven in exchange for the Warp Stone, um, which, what, which is what they wanted, of course, which is why they were there. So here's a great big climactic battle for the monastery, um, and... It's just such a great narrative campaign. Finally, it shows you what to do at the end. 
they have like a dreadnought in the monastery that's activated by warp stone. It's not a real dreadnought, it's like um, just a robot that is powered by warp stone that the Skaven want. Um, and just how to wrap up afterwards. Experience points, of course, and fake points on how to dole them out depending on what you do. And then, ooh, one piece of hair. And then um, how to spend experience points with all the different people who can train you. Like, like this really, this game really helps to connect everything together. And it's such a great campaign. Like I said, it, it um, connects you to other campaigns that were really big at the time. Uh, it gives you leads and contacts. It gives, and here we go into profiles. Each, just about each person, I guess, especially all of the major players have like their own little character drawings. Um, I remember this is where I got the idea for making that um, the necromancer voice that I do for my minis. I remember playing this guy, Pierre, Padre Pierre Habermas, and just making that voice. Hey, you kid, what are you doing in my library? Ah! And um, just being able to create all these characters and voices from, you know, just looking at a picture and some descriptive narrative is just so cool. Look at that guy. Um, but as a GM, like I said, this was Iron Man. And you get all the information for how to play Heinrich Kemmler, um, how to roleplay him. The Arc of Chaotis is what the thing that powers the the Iron Man and um, how the PCs can use it themselves without the help of the Skaven. And then here, how to put in your own fantasy battles. I guess at the time they were really, Games Workshop was really looking to expand their um, wargaming by connecting them to these RPGs and I think that was really cool. I wish they'd continued with it, um, uh, uh, making more books like this. And here you've got some sample NPCs. Dr. Johann Stummelfennig was, uh, was a great favorite. <laughs> Always thought that he had a cold hypochondriac. Um, but yeah, I, I just looking through this again for the first time again after so many years. I lost my original copy, like I said, so um, it's just so great. It's so nostalgic and such a such a great way to spend the afternoon. <laughs> Here's a battle roster where you can keep track of uh, if you're doing actually rolling out for each combat or just um, using the simplified combat rules. You can figure out who's injured, who's dead by the end. And they're all broken down into like non-combatants, weak fighters, standard fighters, the dwarves, and then superior fighters. And um, so they really thought of everything. And here you've got like the Gazetteer and um, little character profiles. But yep, a lot of fun. So awesome. So glad to have it. I picked it up off of eBay for, for really, really cheap, and I knew I just had to had to pick it up. So if you can find it, if you can get your hands on a cheap copy, definitely. Turn on the Lightmaster, two thumbs up, and um, thanks for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one.